everybody. I just cannot wait to show you how much fun we are going to have. We are going to fold a circle into a triangle and then fold it into this fabulous three-dimensional figure called the tetrahedron and take it from there. The kids are going to have a fabulous way that they can go ahead and learn about fractions in a fun and neat way and also learning about new things, about new shapes, about new names, things that they might already know. Like, do they know what an isosceles trapezoid is? Do they know what a rhombus is? So these are some of the things that are going to come up in the process. And based on that, they're going to see how fractions are unveiled. And that can be a nice segue for you to teach them about equivalent fractions. Let's go. Follow me. Come on, vamonos. Everybody, let's go. Okay. So today what we're going to do is we are going to take a circle and we are going to fold it into first an equilateral triangle. And then we're going to fold it to some other really cool, familiar shapes. And if they're not familiar, the kids will start to become familiar. And from there, we're going to find out some really cool things that we can about it. So the hardest part is actually to fold this into an equilateral triangle. So the center point is our key right here. So the first thing I want to do is your first fold that you want to do is you want to take it and you want to go up to where the center of that circle is. And you're almost folding in a piece of the arc and you want to make a nice solid crease. So when you hold it up, okay, like so, this represents the side of one of the triangles. So now the second part is really tough because now you have to go ahead and fold it over again, but you have to be really precise. I like to tell kids it's almost as if you're starting to create the bottom of an ice cream cone and we don't want anything to drip out. So what we're going to do is we are going to Fold this over like so. So there's two things we want to do. We want to create that nice tight corner because we don't want anything to drip out of there, okay? At the same time, so we're going to kind of hold my finger here, but at the same time, you want to do what you did earlier and get that arc, that, we, uh, that part of the circle, to go and hit the center. So we are going to kind of make this tight here, and at the same time, we're going to push ourselves to where this is touching the center of the circle, and from there we're going to make a crease. So when you hold it up, you can actually see it looks like an ice cream cone because that's what we want. So now we have two sides. So after that, what we're going to do is we take, I'd like to tell the kids to hold these corners right here because these are going to be the vertices of the bottom of our triangle. And it's almost like we're building a hot pocket and we don't want any food to get out of the hot pocket because hot pockets are delicious. Yum. So I like to tell the kids to hold their fingers right about there and fold it up gently. Okay. You want to make sure that it creases here and it also creases there. And if it does that, what it's naturally going to do is it's naturally going to get itself pretty close to the center. And then again, whoops, I'm going to make this a little neater. We go ahead and we make a crease. So when I hold it up, I have myself an equilateral triangle. And at this time you can ask your kids, what's an equilateral triangle? And they can say all of the sides and all of the angles are equal. So that's pretty cool. So now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take the top and we're going to take the top of our triangle. If we look at it this way, we're going to take the top here and we're going to fold it to the midpoint of the opposite side. So again, I want to go take the tip of this and I want to fold it down to the opposite side. And you want to be super neat with that. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to keep my finger here. I'm going to make sure I'm nice and neat. And then up top, I'm going to make a nice, neat crease. You can actually see me making a nice, neat crease right here. Okay? So now, if you hold it up, okay? If you hold it up, everybody should recognize what this thing is. And this thing, I hope you all say, is a trapezoid. And if you know what special kind of a trapezoid is, that's pretty awesome. So that's what, I, that's what I like to say to my kids. If you guys know what type of a trapezoid is, this would be pretty awesome. And actually, it's an isosceles trapezoid, which is cool because these guys are called legs. And when the legs are equal, okay, that means it's called isosceles because if it's a trapezoid, this side and this side are going to be parallel. So if you think about it, we started with a circle. Then we made ourselves into an equilateral triangle. And just by folding this part, we became a trapezoid. So now if I turn this around, 
At this time, you can ask your kids how many triangles actually make up the trapezoid, and they're going to tell you that there's three of them. Now, along here, you'll see an edge, and along here, you're also going to see an edge. So the first thing I want you to do is we're going to fold the triangle right along this edge. So we're going to take this outer triangle, and we're going to fold along that line there. You can actually see that that's the line, and they're going to fold it in like this. And by folding that, <coughs> excuse me, by folding that inward, we have yet a new shape. And the kids are going to be like, it's a diamond, it's a diamond. If the kids say rhombus, you need to give them a high five because that's exactly what this is. This is a rhombus because all four sides are congruent. It's like basically taking a square and giving a little squash. Okay. Now, you can go ahead and ask the kids how many triangles make up the trapezoid. I'm not the trapezoid, that make up the rhombus. They're going to tell you two. You're like, good, great, good. So now I'm going to fold it over along the other crease. And now we have ourselves a cute little teeny tiny um, equilateral triangle. So what you could do is you can open this up and you could say how many triangle, how many small triangles make up the big triangle. And they could say there's four. So if you said, well, what is the area of one small triangle in relation to the big one, and now you've got fractions, right? You had fractions before because you're also going to have them do two things for you. I have a worksheet that I have that I'll make sure that uh, shows up for you guys, um, but you're going to ask them, you know, what fraction is the trapezoid in relation to the big guy, what relation um, is the uh, rhombus, and then also finally the equilateral triangle. So this is a really nice introduction to fractions because with the trapezoid, you can say to them, how many triangles do you need to make the trapezoid? They say, oh, there's three out of how many? Out of four. So therefore, the trapezoid represents three-fourths of, of the total area, right? And the same thing with the um, rhombus. They'll say, oh, it's two, so it's two-fourths. And then if you open it up and you can say, well, two-fourths actually represents how much of the entire figure, then we can start getting into halves and sub one half and simplifying fractions, which is pretty cool. And then finally, the little guy represents one fourth of the total area. So I know that your kids are going to be looking at that and being like, wow, look at this thing. It's making a pyramid. It's making a pyramid. And yes, it is. It's making a pyramid and it has a special name because it has four faces, right? There's four faces on here as I mess around with it, right? We have four, we have three around here, and then the base is a pyramid. So this is actually called the triangular pyramid, but has a much prettier name, and it's called a tetrahedron, because tetra means four, and it means four sides. Now, a tetrahedron is one of the five Platonic solids, because Plato was a pretty awesome mathematician, and to him, this tetrahedron represented fire. So you could also have your kids create the other uh, four solids if you want to go ahead and look that up, which is pretty cool. So they're being like, oh, it does this. So that's pretty neat. And we're going to do something with that in a little bit. But the other thing I want to show you now is I want you to have the kids open up this triangle again, okay, to the big triangle, because we're going to create something even cooler. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these three vertices, okay, this one here, this one here, and this guy right here, and this time, we're going to fold each one of these to the center of the circle, okay? So we're going to take this, and we're going to fold it to the center of the circle. Make a nice crease. So if you open it up, it's folding to the center. You're going to take the next one. You're going to fold that guy to the center. And then finally, you're going to take this last one, and you're going to fold it to the center. So now you should be looking at this and now they should all be screaming at you. This is a hexagon. And yes, it is a hexagon. It's pretty cool. So, and you can ask them how many triangles make up the hexagon. And they're going to be like, there's going to be six of them. So at this time, here's what I need you to do. Um, and there's a, again, a follow along worksheet that you can do. You want them to outline the triangles that make up the hexagon. Okay. You want them to outline the triangles that make the hexagon, which is what I'm doing right now. So I'm going around here. And I'm doing this just so. So when you open it up, all of these should meet in the middle, by the way. So you can adjust those with the kids, okay? These um, meet in the middle, okay? But then what I also want you to do is right over here where there's another triangle on the tip there, create that in here, along here, oops, and along there. So if you hold it up, you can actually see 
that this triangle has now been broken down into nine triangles. So now we have nine little triangles that make this up. And now what you can ask the kids is what fraction is the hexagon of the big triangle? So you can ask them that. So and they should say, well, there's six, uh, tri uh, six triangles that make up the hexagon out of nine. So it's six out of nine. And then you can talk about simplifying that fraction to two thirds. What you can also do is you can also go back to this trapezoid right here and say, well, this new trapezoid, because they should all recognize this little guy right here is a new trapezoid. Well, how many of the, you know, what's the fraction of this little new trapezoid in relation to the big figure? So again, because there's nine pieces in the, in the diagram, three of them make up the trapezoid. So therefore it would be three ninths and or one third. And then you can do the same thing with the rhombus. Okay, so this is what's so cool about it is you can take this and keep on creating brand new fractions with it, but it doesn't end there. So if you notice, there are a double folds here, yes? You had this fold here and then this original fold here. Have the kids crease those nice uh, uh, one more time again because we want to make those nice and tight. Okay, so we're going to make those tight, make those nice and tight. So what that does is it creates a what we call a truncated tetrahedron. And what's pretty cool about that is that you can take this, where am I here? You can take this and there's an open lip somewhere on one of your spaces right here and you can slide this guy right in, go like this, and then put this guy right on top and then get yourself a piece of tape, which I'm going to do in a second, and you can put it together here and create this cute little truncated tetrahedron. But what's even better is it gets better is that if you take 20 of these and you put a bunch of them together, okay, what you can do is you can put, I said 20, right? I'm repeating myself, 20 of them together and make an icosahedron. So you can have the kids then decorate just the front because that's all we're going to see, this guy right here. So before you have them tape it together, you can have them go ahead and put anything special that they want on there and 20 of these will make one big beautiful icosahedron and you can hang it from your classroom and the kids can proudly look at it every time. So it all began with a circle and it got us to this position right over here and along the way the kids learned about fractions. So this is an awesome introduction to fractions for kids and it's a really fun way and really cool connections between geometry and um, fractions.